Okay folks, this is Carol again and I'm recording the webinar that we just had because the recording on the webinar didn't work. So unfortunately, um, thankfully it was a free webinar so I can now put this up publicly for everyone to see. And you'll also see the sorts of things we're doing in the webinars. So just check out my website for those. Um, you can come to one for free to try it out and then after that they'll be paid. Um, okay, so we did hard anger and the first thing we did was set up a workspace. So um, we needed a, a special grid to do the hard anger design and so we're going to set that up by coming to our grid icon, left clicking on that and that will hide the grid right clicking on it and you'll get your options box. So you can see here we can show the grid, snap to grid and we want that on for this exercise. The size of the grid we want at three millimeters which is one eighth of an inch or 0.125 of an inch if I remember correctly and so I'm just going to change those both to three millimeters don't need a reference point and go OK. So I've got a tiny little grid here. Don't worry though, we can zoom in. Now the other thing we did was to actually save this grid as a template. Now it's not the sort of template that you print out to do your embroidery designs. This is a workspace template and you have your normal template that the software defaults to but you can actually set up your own templates for the workspace so that you don't have to remember every time you want to do a hard anger design what grid size should I use um, you can actually set this up and call it hard anger and just call it up instead of your default template and to do that all you do is go file save as and in your drop down menu of the file types if you come right down to the bottom, you'll see version 6 Benina Embroidery Software Templates and it's an AMT60 file. So select that. When you select that, you'll automatically, the software automatically opens the template folder. So you don't have to think where is the template folder, it will happen for you automatically. And in here, I've already done it as you can see, you can save um, one called hard anger. So just name your file here, whatever type of um, name you want, because I'm going to do all my hard anger designs on a 3x3 grid. I'm calling this one hard anger and I'm going to save. It's going to say, Do I want to write over because I already had one? And I'll go yes, but you won't get that if it's a new one. Okay, now to show you how this works, if I close this workspace, if I go to the new icon here, it will just open the default. Okay, I'm going to close that. But if I go to File, New, then I get the option, do I want the hard anger or the normal um, template? And in this case I'm going for the hard anger, so I just select that and go OK. And that will give me my three millimeter grid. So whenever you want to open one of your templates, always go up to File, New. Don't use the new icon here. Okay, now let's zoom in so we can see clearly our grid. And you can see some red lines appearing. Um, that's because whenever you've got Snap to Grid on and you have your cursor over a grid line in the select mode, you'll actually see red lines appear. You'll see them when I start to digitize. I'm going to choose a closed object tool and I'm going to digitize a block that we're going to create as a pattern stamp. There they are, there's those red lines. So I'm just going, actually I'm not going to choose that, I'm going to choose the rectangle tool, sorry. And I'm going to digitize a rectangle from, uh, that will be one grid line wide and two grid lines deep. So just left click in both those points. Make sure that you actually see those red grid lines so that you know you're right on the corner of the grid and you'll get a nice even rectangle there the size you want. And we're going to turn this into a pattern stamp that we can use to stamp out our pattern. So um, we're going to set it up first. We need to 
remove the tie-ins and tie-offs. The software by default ties in and ties off after every object. Because we're going to do a lot of these blocks and they're all going to be running into each other um, and they're all going to be the same colour, we don't want the machine stopping and starting, tying off after every little block. Um, it's just unnecessary. So if we select this block and by clicking on the select tool the last thing we digitized turns pink so it was the block so we don't need to click on the block as well um, and we can right click on there to go to the object properties and if you come along here you'll see the tie in tie off tab so we're going to turn them off so just select off on both of those now be very careful that next time you digitize a design you have them turned on so double check because um, it's they should be on by default in a new design but just double check because if you don't have them on your design won't read properly I'm not sure about to the Benina machines but certainly if um, when you're converting them for other brands of machine the machines see them as a corrupt file you must have ties in and tie off we will be putting in a tie in and tie off right at the end of the design um, so um, we don't need to worry about it till then but just be double sure next time you digitize we're going to go OK the other thing I want to do is set the stitch angle. I could have left those open actually. So I'll just right click again. Now I could set the stitch angle in the reshape tool just by swinging the angle bar, but I'm going to set it as, at a specific angle um, which gives me the nicest stitch out and that's 179. And because I know that that's a good angle for horizontal stitching, which is what I'm after, um, it's just a bit better than 180 as I'll show you in a minute I'm going to do that now apply and if I zoom in and move this out of the way for you you can see oh I'm in step stitch and I wanted satin so I'm just going to change that while I'm at it fill stitch satin go back to the angle now I better apply that and go back to the stitch angle. Okay, now you can see that we've got a nice straight lines across the top and the bottom of the block and we've got a nice even zigzag. If I have it at 180 degrees, apply, you can see it looks a little bit angled. It's not as nice as the 179. Just a little tip there whenever you want horizontal satin stitch because we're trying to mimic hand stitching here um, and just as an aside if you want looking for inspiration for hard anger designs just you can just google your images and there's hundreds of pictures there which you can use as inspiration um, for building up your hard anger designs okay now I'm going to go okay the other thing I'm going to do is arrange the start and end positions at the moment they're starting and ending in the center so I'm going to move those so that they're out of the way for us. So I'm going to start on the first stitch of the design and end on the last stitch of the design and go OK. Right, now we can see what we're doing. Now I have got underlay switched on. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is go to the reshape tool and move my end point. I want my start and end at the same end. And um, you'll see why in a little while um, it just when you're building up your pattern it means that every second one will fit in together without having to move them 